if you're not having a conversation with your kids in middle school yes uh about these things if you've not already started it yeah it's too late yeah like it needs to start really really early yeah um because again because also first the things that we're taught first, the things we hear about a topic first, yeah. are often they become a pillar, and it's really hard to break that down. Yes. So if your kid hears something about and is taught something about sex that is contrary to what the Bible teaches yeah. first, that oftentimes becomes sort of the anchored belief, yeah. and it takes a while for that to become de deconstructed. Well, welcome to the Couch Sound Podcast, where we give you tools to connect with your kids and point them to Jesus. I'm Josh, and I have the esteemed... That's right. The not mean... No. But he is a Bible memory machine... It's not true. <laughs> Ryan Conlon. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> we have been going through this book, Engaging Your Teens World, from Axis.org. Uh, by David Eaton, Jeremiah Callahan, and, well, with Alan Briggs. Stephen and I talked about this last week. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see if uh, they get back to us on why Alan only gets a with and not an and. <laughs> just, I never noticed that. Yes, yes. <laughs> My theory is that it's because he wrote one chapter, but that's that's oh. just a thought. Um or he helped them organize it or something. He's so, their boss. He wanted a little credit. <laughs> right, right. Alan's actually the boss. Uh, this, So, yeah, we've been going through this book uh, this summer and just chapter by chapter. And this week we are going to be talking about chapter nine, the new sex talk. Dun, dun, dun. Sweet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's every parent's favorite discussion. And... Um, what we're going to do is I, I've got some like key buckets that this that stood out to me from this chapter that I'll kind of talk about. But uh, we're just going to go through the cha the the chapter and see what stood out to us, what was helpful. So starting out in this chapter, they're really good at telling stories, but it gives a story about um, – a girl who sends a nude photo to a boy. And I think what's helpful about this is sometimes, you know, you hear about these stories or even like maybe your kid has been involved with something and you're like, why would you do that? And it was really interesting. Just this, the first part of this chapter talked a lot just about um, attention Mm -hmm. Like the desire for attention, the desire for affirmation, approval. And I thought that was just really uh, just a helpful perspective because I think sometimes we we think about the the thing, the consequence, and not what got the ball rolling in the first place and why is it so easy and common now. Yeah, I'll, I'll say that yeah. I think it's a helpful, especially for girls maybe i'm off on that but like when it comes to sex and girls compromising and doing things that they don't want to do or are uncomfortable yep. with doing it's it's all for getting attention i yeah. think most of the time even when i like <laughs> our instagram feeds like out oh, boys too but everyone's just seeking for attention yeah. and so girls know a great way to get a guy's attention is through sex yep. um it's, it's that that's sometimes is one of the heart symptoms. I think there's a lot of heart symptoms going on with uh, or things going on with the heart with regards to sexual sin. But yeah, attention certainly for females, I think, is big. Yeah. And, and guys know that for sure. So. And and it's growing right through technology. Uh, things become more and more accessible. Things not only become accessible, but they become promoted as well. Um, and even just, I mean, it talks about a couple quotes from people like Miley Cyrus and, uh, Lily Rose Depp, who's Johnny Depp's daughter. And just like the view of what sex is, what it is for, um, is continually being questioned and twisted and it, it, 
there's a line in here it says and that's a lot to process and it's confusing to teens and yeah we know it's also confusing to adults too um but the the first part of this chapter i really feel like it just talks about how access to um sexualized content whether it is sought out or not um and sometimes it's just because you're around people and then they send you something or they ask you for something whatever the case is because of the access the topic becomes more and more casual depending on the group of people you're with mm -hmm. um i think for some students they probably talk about it a lot more with maybe friends than they do with parents because the reaction's different right mm -hmm. and so i think um yeah it's just very just key to know that access um to these things just makes it familiar um and maybe in the wrong kind of familiar right i think we can tend to even just as youth pastors i'm, I'm sure parents too we can often it's like sex is powerful, of course, yeah. and we focus how powerfully negative it is. Right. And so then we just play this thing of like, it's powerfully negative. It can be powerfully negative, so yeah. we keep you from doing the negative things. But right. I think we also want to give kids the correct perspective that it's also can be very powerful in a positive way, which mm -hmm. is why God also protects it. Yeah. And God does not want it to go outside of what his design for it was because he has a powerful purpose behind sex between mm -hmm. sex between a husband, one man and one woman for a commitment for a lifetime. Yep. And so there's, uh, so anyway, so I like the, the illustration I like, I got this from someone else, forget who, but it's like sex. Like if, uh, uh you know, uh, I think in India, it's like they, for farming, they will often use elephants. Um, so you have a dude sitting on an elephant and he'll pull like, you know, the, the farming equipment yeah. and that's good. It's really powerful. It works right. great until you lose control. Mm. of the elephant and then that sucker just becomes powerfully destructive mm. and so so it's just like this little, like that's really sex good. is like really powerful you have to control it um and use it in the ways that god intended to you be used yeah. so um and and that's why we teach kids the the biblical ethic of what sex is for right so and and i think it's huge because there are so many voices that are coming at your kid with different ideas about what sex is um, other than what the Bible clearly lays out, then, I mean, I think it needs to be more than just uh, them hearing about it at church, at youth group. They need to be hearing about this from you at home. It was really cool. I was talking with my wife, Laura, and she said that, um, like, she always had a very positive view of sex because her her mom like just talked was she was accessible so one she she like made herself self available but then she would also just talk about these things with her um in in a positive way what it what is sex like what is the purpose of sex and that it is a good thing it is better in the parameters in the design that god created it to be um and I think that was just one thing that, uh, you know, she, she was just always so grateful to her mom that she, it wasn't just she was willing to talk whenever Laura wanted to, but she also broached the conversation multiple times over her life um, and not just once, you know what I mean? Yep. And I, I think that's, that's sometimes uh, a misnomer is that, you know, we, we th you hear about giving your kid the sex talk almost like there's a TED talk that you got to listen to and then you're good after that. It's like, no, this is a conversation. Just like all the things we've been talking about in this book, these things are conversations um, and kind of how like uh, I think it was last week that Stephen and I talked about always, or always conversations. This is an always conversation. You, you, It's one that – even though maybe some of the nuances have changed over time, uh, the the conversation itself still needs to be had over and over and over. One of the yeah, I agree. It's the biggest 
a uh, piece of advice I give to parents is that if you are not having conversations and teaching your kids about sex, someone else will. Yes. Always. Yeah. And parents will always, like, I hear, uh, and, like, if you're not having a conversation with your kids in middle school yes, uh, about these things, if you've not already started it, yeah, it's too late. Yeah. Like, it needs to start really, really early. Yeah. Um, because, again, because also, first, the things that we're taught first, the things we hear about a topic first, yeah. are often, they become a pillar, and it's really hard to break that down. Yes. So if your kid hears something about and is taught something about sex that is contrary to what the Bible teaches right. first, that oftentimes becomes sort of the anchored belief, yep. and it takes a while for that to become de- deconstructed, yep. um, corrected. So if you're not having those conversations, someone else will and is, whether it be their friends at school, um, movies, whatever. They're getting an education yes. somewhere. Yes. Probably, definitely earlier than you think they are. Yes, so. yes. And I know this is an awkward conversation to have, for a variety of reasons for you um but you know i i think sometimes the accessibility and the fact that you know younger and younger these conversations are needing to be had it can freak you out as a parent i like i i i just even talking with my own parents and and thinking about things that they had to talk with me about and what it's just like man it it's just uncomfortable and you can you can freak out a little bit there there can be fear and then that will cause you to react um you can be tempted to react and by reacting i mean like saying like uh, d- just don't do that don't don't think about that don't care about that like almost like shoving it to the side cuz it's like uh hot potato i don't know what to do with this right and i get it <laughs> but one of uh, there's a line in here um it's kind of in the midst of, of different things but this line uh am i worth the fight dad i would say parents mom dad if if your grandparents that and you're the primary caretaker for your kids your grandkids like are your kids worth the fight to think about these uncomfortable things step into uncomfortable conversations over and over and over again because you love them um and may- maybe maybe you haven't been first be the next the the last part of the the chapter kind of talks about boundaries and guidelines they they actually call them fences and um i don't know ryan so we're talking about helpful boundaries and things what are are there any and I can give you a second if you need to think about it, but like, are there, I, I want to think about helpful, maybe helpful principles around bound, good boundaries and unhelpful things that maybe parents can, like, they're tempted to lean into when they're trying to set these things up, but they actually become unhelpful. I just think that kids are, they're not educated enough why God made this Mm -hmm. in part because I don't think they're educated enough about marriage. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of focus on sex, but there's not a lot of focus on what is marriage? What is the point of marriage? Why Mm -hmm. has God created marriage when it comes to sex? Like if you take sex and your education of sex and you strip it away from marriage, like the kids will struggle to connect the dots. Sex is just something for, for so many high schoolers, it's like something to be enjoyed mm. or it's just pleasure. It's just whatever. But God wants you to have a awesome marriage mm-hmm. because it glorifies him. It's an image of his marriage between you and him. Like, and so that's interesting. So I, I think part of what you're saying then is like when we make sex a standalone topic, that's mm-hmm. actually unhelpful because the context th- that God designed sex to be enjoyed in is marriage. Mm-hmm. And so almost when you d- divorce the two, it it actually doesn't give enough vision, enough context, enough appeal even yep. um, because – yeah, it's just devoid of the context. Yep. I think you have to attach it to the greater vision, what God has for sex and how he combines it with marriage. That's huge. And so, if, and that gives like a why. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, but even I think there's more like nuanced. It's like not just giving kids like a, hey, don't don't have sex outside of marriage. But like God's literally wired you and designed you like when you have sex, it re- it releases oxytocin, which mm-hmm. attaches you to that partner. Right. And like like for women, the only other time that they have more oxytocin released in them outside of having sex is when they give birth. Why? Hmm. Because it attaches them to that infant. Mm. God's designed you. Mm-hmm. God's wired you in that way. Whereas like if you're watching pornography, like, yeah, you're releasing oxytocin. You're becoming attached to different people that you'll never meet. Yep. And it becomes harder for you to attach images yourself. Images of people you'll Fake never images. Yeah. And so then when you actually get married, you, not that you're ruined, but yeah, it's going to be harder for you. Yes. And like there's many guys who are addicted to pornography mm-hmm. and can't attach themselves to their wife, can't get just frankly aroused because they've been watching pornography. Mm. And so that that's baggage that you carry into your marriage that you probably want to avoid. Yes. And yes. that's why God has designed sex for in marriage. That's why it's not, it's that's why God labels lust as sin, mm. right? Mm-hmm. Like it's just not helpful for your marriage. <laughs> right. So, right. Yeah. Anyway. There's some, there's something I, I think to paint, almost like my mother-in-law did for my wife, but just like when you can paint, uh, and it doesn't have to be graphic or anything, but just kind of like how you were talking just now. I don't think that was crazy, but like to <laughs> like, it, it, it wasn't like unhelpful, you know what I mean? But it's like to almost get vision cast for your kids. Like, man, they're, when you say don't, that is very unhelpful for uh, for a student. I know it was for me. Um, when I hear don't, my immediate is why. Why can't I do this? Why Like, why not? But when you tell me because there's a better thing coming, I was like, oh, well, maybe that's more appealing. Yeah. To, to clarify, I do think don't's helpful, but it's way more powerful when you attach yes. uh, the why behind it. Yes. So I think for parents, it's helpful to, and many I think do, but to become comfortable and educated with having a conversation of why it is that God has designed us this way. Yes, yes. Both biblically and um, even just how he's wired us yes. is so helpful. Exactly. So when you don't talk about sex with your kids and then you have that first conversation— or that second conversation, it might be a little awkward. But the more regularly this kind of these kinds of things become topics you talk about, then uh, and, and pointing to a biblical uh, reason, a God given uh, reason for things, I think it's going to be just become more and more natural uh, to ha- to have these conversations. Um, yeah, the, the last part of the, of this book just talks about, uh, boundaries or fences. Mm -hmm. And the, the one thing, the thought I had that was helpful when, uh, when I was reading that was just the idea of like, man, to just say, don't go like, don't don't watch that, don't do this, like, almost to, like, fence in your kid, that is, uh, and especially as they get older, that becomes progressively more and more unhelpful. When you vision cast for your kid, when you when you say, hey, here, here's, here's uh, the biblical reason, but you also train them because they're going to grow up to be human beings, adult human beings who have full control over what they see, what they do. If you can show them, hey, here's how you put helpful things in place uh, that m- may be helpful um, uh, as as you fight lust and, and all these different things and as you strive towards uh, kind of what God has for you in sex and and potentially marriage and all these different things that's going to be more helpful versus i'm just going to fence you and i'm going to block you from all these things and what when they turn 18 you know what i mean just to use boundaries as a way of training your kid versus nope you can't you can't go this far and no more um 
I think is a, a better way to set up your kids for when they graduate, for when they leave the house. So, yeah, I do want to encourage parents, just even with the boundaries thing. If you've set boundaries for your kids, good job. Yeah, <laughs> like I, that is a good thing. I feel like uh, my parents are wonderful. I felt like sometimes, uh, not 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 only with sex and these things, but I didn't know what the boundaries were until I crossed them, which was mm-hmm. not helpful for me. Right. So I, I do think it's like. And probably it sets you up for the conversation to cast the vision. Yes. So it's like, it is helpful to give kids the boundaries and um, whatever those are for you. Yeah. Anyway, it's it is good to set up those boundaries and attach the why behind them. For sure. So yeah, that's the key. And have ongoing conversations and continuing to educate yourself and educate your your kids on uh, what does scripture say about this and. Um, how are we hardwired? How is this good? How is this best for human flourishing and yeah. worshiping God and for our marriages? Those sorts of things. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, parents, that's all we have for you this week. Thank you for listening. We we appreciate you all, and we are praying for you. And if you have any questions, please let us know. If you have any feedback on the podcast, please let us know. And we will catch you next week. Peace. Hey, thanks for watching. You can follow us on Instagram at The Couch Time Podcast. Let us know what you thought about the podcast. Also, let us know if there's any topics or things you'd like us to cover. You can comment and email us at podcast at graceky.org. Please like, subscribe, and share the video with other parents.